Now Rangers are probably my second favourite class in all of D&D and 5e. So what better way to do a video than to do the Hunter subclass for the Ranger. So for this we start with Ranger. And for our favoured enemy you can honestly take kind of whatever you want. Ranger Knight is always good if you want to have heavy armour. Mage Breaker is really good if you want to have some arcana on you. Keep the Veil, really good for protection from good and evil. Bounty Hunter, I personally really like Bounty Hunter. So this one, one I would pick. But second pick would probably be Ranger Knight. And then for your Natural Explorer, I really like the Wasteland Wanderers. So I would pick Poison. For your ability points, you want something like this. A 10 in Strength, 16 in Dex, 14 in Constitution, 8 in Intelligence. 16 Wisdom, as this is your spellcasting modifier, and 10 in Charisma. Now you could always switch your decks with your Strength if you want a Strength-based um, Ranger. I personally like going full Dex though. And for your proficiencies, take whatever you think will help you. Okay, Ranger level 2, we have level 1 spell slots. And to start off with, we're going to take Ensnaring Strike. I really like this. This also ties in nicely with our Bounty Hunter. We're also going to take a Hunter's Mark. Now this is a bonus action. It is a concentration spell, so please bear that in mind. But you get an additional 1d6 damage. And for your fighting style, we are going to be a ranged combatant with melee abilities. So we will pick Archery to begin with. Okay, Ranger level 3 is where we get the good stuff. We have one more spell. So for this one, I will be taking Hail of Thorns. The Thorns deal weapon damage to the target and then explode. The explosion deals an additional 1 to 10 piercing damage to the target and surrounding creatures. Really nice way of just basically having an explosion as an arrow. And of course we want the Hunter subclass. This gives us Hunter's Prey, so we can either have Colossal Slayer. Once per turn, your weapon attack deals an extra 1d8 damage if the target is below its hit point maximum. Giant Killer. If a large or bigger creature attacks you, you can use your reaction to make a melee attack. Or Horde Breaker, target two creatures standing close to each other, attacking them in quick succession. Honestly, all three are really good. In the early stages, I do think your best bet is either Horde Breaker or Colossus Slayer. This will be the one I pick though. I think you get more out of this uh, with your action economy than the other two per se. Okay, Ranger level 4 and this is where we start to have some fun. And for our feet, we are actually going to skip the air side for now. And we're going to take Sharpshooter. So, your ranged weapon attacks do not receive penalties from high ground rules. Perfect. And ranged weapon attacks with weapons you're proficient with have a minus 5 penalty to their attack roll, but deal an additional 10 damage. This is essentially the ranged version of Great Weapon Master. Really good stuff. Okay, Ranger level 5. Most importantly, we now have access to extra attack, which is amazing. But we also have a bunch more spells. And for this, we are going to start with Spike Growth. Shape a piece of ground into hard spikes. Movement is halved. A creature walking on the spikes takes 2 to 8 piercing damage for every 1.5 meters it moves. This is so good. Because if you can throw this down and stay concentrated on it in an isolated area, you can just rain arrows down on your enemies as they can't even walk towards you. So much fun. Okay, Ranger level 6, we have two more passives. So, we now get to select one more of these. And, again, you can really take anything you want. I will take Ranger Knight. Um, it's between this or Keeper of the Veil for me. Either or. We won't be using heavy armor, but the skill proficiency in history and the opportunity to use heavy armor, I think, is really good. And as a viewer, this will give you more options when it comes to armors that you don't just have to follow the one I use. And if you're a natural explorer, we are going to go with fire. Okay, Ranger level 7. Hit pull is now up to 60, which is nice, and we have level 2 spell slots. So, uh, there's a few options here you could take. Cure Wounds is really good if you are in a pickle and you need some support. Lesser Restoration is really good. Pass Without a Trace is really good. Protection from Poison is really good. But, I think, keep it simple and go with Long Strider. I think, overall, as a spell you can cast at any point, that will just last until Long Rest. Long Strider is amazing. And now we have Defensive Tactics. So this gives us the option of one of these three. Escape the Horde. Opportunity attacks against you have disadvantage, which is so good. Steel Will. Your unshakable resolve grants you advantage on saving throws against being frightened. And multi attack Defense. When an enemy attacks you, they have a minus four penalty to additional attack rolls against you until the start of their next turn. Now, 
Now this is... For me, it's between multi-attack defense and escape the horde. I don't think there is one hit that you will use more often than not. Because with this one, you are relying on enemies having more than one attack. And only certain classes have that feature. Escape the Horde is relying on you being stuck in melee and having to run away a lot. So ideally, it's up to you. Um, because this build is going to be ranged, but with the melee weaponry as well, I think Escape the Horde is just a little bit better. Okay, Ranger level 8, we have access to Land's Stride. You become an expert and moving through the wilderness. Difficult terrain no longer slows you down. And for ASI, it's finally time for us to bump our decks up to 18. Ranger level 9, we now have level 3 spell slots. And Lightning Arrow, this is an amazing spell. It is four, sorry, 6 to 48 damage. And after the arrow hits, smaller bolts snake out from the target towards nearby creatures. Again, just another amazing spell at damage dealing. Okay, Ranger level 10, we have Hide in Plain Sight. Camouflage yourself with your environment, become invisible and gain plus 10 bonus to stealth checks as long as you stand still. I've never really used this personally. I'm sure if you want to be more stealthy and sneaky, it would come in handy. But I don't think it's an essential ability in this game, per se. And now we are going to take Keeper of the Veil. And Wasteland Wanderer Cold. Okay, Ranger, level 11. And as you can see, we have more actions. So we can now do Volley, which is a weapon attack. And we can do Whirlwind Attack. Strike out at all nearby foes, making separate attack rolls against each one. Really good melee one, and really good ranged one. We also have access to one more spell, and for me personally, it's Conjure Barrage. Channel your weapon's essence into a destructive, widespread volley. And then finally, Ranger, level 12. We get one more feat, so of course our dex is going up to the maximum of 20. Okay, so that was our build, level 1 to 12. Let's go with some items now. Now, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Nearly every build in this game, the maximum and most OP armor you can use is the Helldusk armor that you find in the House of Hope. Now, that is a near end Act 3 thing. I want to give you some options you can get at the beginning, sort of middle of Act 3. Otherwise, every build is just the same. It's just throw on heavy armor and don't get hit. So, for my Hunter build, this is what I would go with. For a circlet, we want the circlet of blasting. This gives us Scorching Ray. And basically, I just really like Scorching Ray. I think it's a really good spell, not too high of a level, so you can use multiple spell slots for it. And overall, just a great utility one. The Flesh Melter Cloak. So, whenever a creature deals melee damage to the wearer, that creature takes 1 to 4 acid damage. And again, since we will have melee capabilities, as you can see, we do have two short swords attached. This is a really good one of just wearing this, and if you get hit, they take a little bit of damage too. The Evasive Shoes, so plus one to Acrobatics, but more importantly, a plus one to Armor Class, which ties very nicely with the UNT Scale Mail. Now, this allows you to add your full Dexterity Modifier to your Armor Class. It doesn't give you a disadvantage on Ability Checks, and a plus one bonus to Initiative. And as you can see, our Armor Class is 21, which is really good. For Gloves, the Legacy of Masters, a plus two bonus to Attack and Damage Roll with Weapons. The Strange Conduit Ring. While concentrating on a spell, like Hunter's Mark or something like that, the wearer's weapon attacks deal an additional 1 to 4 psychic damage. The Ring of Regeneration. At the beginning of your turn, the ring activates and heals you for 1 to 4 hit points. Now, we will be using bows, but when it comes to short swords, Ambusher, again a plus 1 to initiative rolls, and obviously this does stack, so even though we won't be using it, if it's not even on our, in our hand, sorry, we still get these bonuses. Which means we have the ability to also hit them with 1 to 6 additional necrotic damage if they haven't taken a turn yet and if we're stuck in melee. And the Sword of Life Stealing. On a critical hit with this weapon, take an extra 10 necrotic damage and gain 10 temporary hit points. Really, really good. And the Darkfire Short Bow. This is my personal favourite bow for the simple reason you get haste. And with haste, because it's concentration, if we concentrate on this, we activate the Strange Conduit Ring. Really good stuff. If you wanted to go with a more strength-based build, you would obviously change your armor up and have better armor. Probably a heavy armor to tie in with our abilities. But you'd probably want to take like the Titan Bow String, something like that. So let's go find some combat with our team, and we'll test this build out. 
Okay, so here in the combat, and before you do anything, as soon as you leave camp, you want to cast Long Strider. Just like that. And as you can see, because it's a ritual spell, it doesn't use any of your spell slots. So we could come in here, and technically we could do it on everyone. If I can just hit Gale. Here we go. And as you can see, we still have all our spell slots down the bottom, but everyone has greater movement. So, let's trigger this fight. And we are first in the initiative order, which is perfect. Now, first up, with this I would cast Haste. And we're going to get our abilities going. So now we are concentrating on Haste, which now means we not only do we have an extra action, but we also will get extra damage from our Strange Conduit Ring. So, there you go, a huge amount of damage, a good 30 damage there. A big miss. But that's okay, and we could come in here with an offhand melee, and then stab them. Okay, we are back to our ranger. Now, let's test out our lightning arrow. Level 3 spell slot. The camera is very janky at the moment. But I do need a better area to hit, so let's come over here. Here we go. Lightning arrow. And we'll target this one here. And there you go, as you can see, we targeted him, and we also hit this one down here. So Lightning Arrow is really good if you have bulk enemies around, but we also have things like Volley. So let's do this. We'll cast it here. And as you can see, so much damage just then, and thanks to Haste, we do have more. So we could do another Volley. Because this doesn't use any spell slots. We can then run in with our offhand weapon. And do extra damage. And as you can see, we saved our concentration. So if you want to just try out your standard attacks with haste going, we'll do this. And we'll just show off how well they work. So there you go, one attack there. Another attack there. One more there. And thanks to Long Strider, we still have the movement. We can move around the battlefield. And we still have another attack we can do here, like that. Four attacks with haste, if you choose to do volleys and stuff like that, even more. And we have our bonus action, Blood follows me and that we can run in and stab just like that. Alright, now let's show off our attacking, or our melee, sorry, capabilities. So, whirlwind attack. Now there's only one here, but we'll just show off anyway. And there you go, so you attack everyone in a circle. So if you wanted to be in the thick of the battle, and you want to put on some heavy armor, you can be a big, big, big DPS character. And thanks to your bow of haste, we can just keep doing things like that. And again, one more attack. And we still have one more attack, thanks to haste, which we haven't even used yet. So we could come back in here with a volley, if we so choose. Now, unfortunately, we missed, but you get the idea. The bow is amazing. Couple that with your damage output and your abilities like volley or whirlwind attack, lightning arrow, conjure barrage. You are such a huge DPS character, whether it's in melee or ranged. And thanks to our insanely high AC, it's so hard for them to hit us. Now, this fight is basically almost over, so we get one more thing we can show off, and let's do Conjure Barrage, because we haven't seen this yet. So, let me pick the right one, that'd be helpful. Conjure Barrage ranged, and we'll do it on you. So we'll come here. Conjure Barrage. Target is blocked. Why is the target blocked, I wonder? Can I do a melee one? I didn't mean to do that on him, but that's okay. <laughs> I guess what we'll do is we'll just finish the fight. So, main attack. And there you go, we got a nice little crit there. And because we crit with our offhand weapon, you can see we gained the 10 temporary hit points we would have achieved. So even though the enemy died on the first hit, the second still crit, and we got those 10 temporary hit points, and we actually finished this battle with the more HP than we started it with. 
That is why the Hunter is an amazing subclass for DPS, damage, crowd control, all sorts. If you've enjoyed, please let me know in the comments below and let me know what you would change about this build. Any new items and whatnot. If you haven't already, please drop the episode a like, it helps me amazingly. If you're new and you're not subscribed, you'd like to, that'd also be amazing and hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.